This video looks at integrating powers of trig functions. Three main types. The first type is when you have a power of cosine and a power of sine. Both of these powers are positive integers. The second one, a power of tangent, a power of secant. Both exponents positive integers. The third one really isn't the power of a trig function, but it's when you have a multiple of an angle. So we'll have the sine of some multiple of x perhaps times the sine of some multiple of x. Different though, the m and n are different. Then cosine with cosine and sine with cosine. So I'll just give you the method on how to deal with the different possibilities. First up, where we have a cosine power and a sine power, it depends on whether or not there's an odd present. Either one of them is odd or both of them is odd. Here's what you do. You factor out one power from the trig function that has the odd power. Um, if both of them have the odd power, just pick one of them and factor out one power from that. What this does is it puts aside one, um, one trig function so that you can then uh, get ready for u substitution, basically. What you're going to do to transform the remaining even power of the of the trig function you chose is you're going to use the simple sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And so if it's a if it's a sine squared left over, use 1 minus cosine squared. If it's a cosine squared left over, use 1 minus sine squared. And then finally the third step is to choose u substitute uh, use u substitution to finish off the problem. If you let u equal the other trig function, the one that you didn't factor out the power from, then um, you'll be able to finish the problem. Uh, what you're doing is you're setting aside a power when you factor out, and that power will be used in the u substitution by you letting u equal the other trig function. And it works out nice. So in the absence of that, if there's no odd powers present, then the possibility then would be maybe they're both even. Now when they're both even, you would do something totally different. When they're both even, what we do is we take all even powers and replace them using the half angle identities. Sine squared is one half times the quantity of one minus the cosine of twice x. Cosine squared is one half of one plus the cosine of twice x. So we replace all the even powers um, and then, you know, just work out, multiply everything out and, and um, see what happens. Uh, thirdly, it could be that one or both of these have a power of one. If that's the case, then your life is made simple as compared to the, the other two methods. You just need to use u substitution. Let u be the trig function that has the power that's not one. And if they're both one, just choose either one to be u. Okay, so this is how you're going to make it through integrating power of sine times a power of cosine. All right, great. Now let's move to a power of tangent times a power of secant. Oh, I'm sorry. In that first case, um, we'd like for these powers to be greater than 1. That way we can then set aside this third case for when the, um, the power is, uh, is uh, equal to 1. All right, great. How about when we have a power of tangent and a power of secant? Well, let's first look at the case where the power of tangent is odd. Here's what we do. It's as reminiscent of what we did before in the previous setup. We're going to factor out one power of secant and one power of tangent. It's all about setting up a u substitution. By you factoring out a power of secant and a power of tangent, that's going to be part of du. Now, if there's remaining uh, powers, so when you, if there was odd power, there'll be remaining guys left over. And so um, those guys will be even powers now. And what you'll do is trade those in, those, those, uh, any, any squares um, in for secant squared minus 1. Tan squared x equals secant squared minus 1. That's how you're going to transform the remaining even powers of tangent. And you're going to switch them then to be powers of secant. The reason why you want to do this is because you're going to let u be secant x. And you'll be able to finish out the problem. You factor out the derivative of secant. So you factor out the du, and then everything else has powers of u, and it'll just be um, turned into a problem, a polynomial in u. 
and, and integrating that polynomial will be straightforward. So that's if the power of tangent is odd. Next up, what about if the power of secant is even? So then what we need to do in this case is factor out secant squared of x. Now if the number on the power of secant is more than 2, then we'll have to transform the rest of them. There'll be remaining even powers left over. And so we'll use the secant squared of x equals 1, mi uh, 1 plus the tangent of x, tangent squared of x. And then that will uh, transform those other guys to be powers of tangent. Why are we doing this? Because we're going to do a u substitution. We're going to let u be tangent x. We factor out a secant squared to be part of du. We got rid of all the other secant squareds and made them tan squareds. So once again, we'll have a polynomial in u to integrate. Okay. So that's when the power of tangent is odd or when the power of secant is even. If it's both of these together, just pick one of the methods. It's not like you're going to do both. Pick one of the above methods and, and work it out. The problem comes when it's uh, neither of these cases, which is, which is you know, very possible. And in that case, there's really no set method. There's nothing I, I can say that this, is, this substitution is going to work out. Okay, you have to try something else. All right, so that's how you deal with powers of tangent and powers of secant. And finally, we just need to see how to deal with uh, multiples of x. So the sine of mx and the sine of nx, where m and n are different. The cosine of mx and the cosine of nx, where m and n are different. Um, they just need to be rational numbers. They don't have to um, be integers. They can be any rational. They can be fractions. And so um, finally then sine and cosine mixed together with different uh, multiples in there. Because if they were the same multiple, then you know we would just call it sine squared and integrate it. And so that's why we're forcing these things to be different. Then we're going to need some other kind of trig identity to help us out. The trig identity we need is based on which one of these three you have. Okay, in the first case, it'll be trade in your sine mx and sine nx for what's on the right hand side here. The formula there has a minus in it. Um, m minus n and m plus n. Okay, then we, if we have the second case, then we have the very same formula but with a plus sign in between. And then finally, if it's the mixture of sine and cosine, then we have the formula that has uh, both, both trig functions as sine, but with the plus in between. And just remember that uh, if it ends up being that somehow when you go to do that subtraction of m minus n in these cases here, if it ends up being that that's a negative number, then just um, use the the even and oddness of the function if um, m minus n is negative, less than 0. Then we're talking about the cosine of some negative number. Okay. Let's call it negative, uh, let's say the cosine of negative x. Well, because this is an even function, we know that's the same as the cosine of x. If somehow we ended up with the sine of negative x, we can trade that in because sine is an odd function. We'll trade that in for negative the sine of x. So if those guys, when you subtract, end up as negative, then just use these, you know, these, um, the even and oddness of sine and cosine to trade in for the positive angle. Okay, and then you'll be able to integrate um, uh, from that level on.